thank uh, Travel Pro and the Spanish Tourist Board in the Hague for the organization of this webinar and for giving us the opportunity to talk today about Andalusia, about uh, inland uh, and cultural uh, tourism in Andalusia. Uh, I am Esther, I work for the um, uh, public company uh, of the regional government of Andalusia, which is in charge of the promotion of Andalusia, of the whole region all around the world. And it's called Turismo Andaluz. We are based in Malaga, but we work for uh, the whole uh, region. I'm going to give you a general presentation about Andalusia, and then I will uh, pass the floor to my colleagues from Caminos de Pasión, it's a route in the heart of Andalusia, uh, from the province of Cádiz also, and then uh, Costa del Sol, Málaga. So starting with Andalusia, uh, I imagine you, uh, most, of, most of you know uh, the region. We are located in the south of Europe. Uh, uh, it's the second largest region in Spain uh, with more than 8 million inhabitants. And we have eight provinces uh, between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, we find the provinces of Huelva and Cádiz in Costa de la Luz. The, in the Mediterranean Sea, you can see the provinces of Malaga, Granada, and Almeria. And inland, you will find the provinces of Jaén, Córdoba, and Sevilla. Sevilla is the capital of the region. We are a region very well connected to other cities in Spain and also in Europe. Uh, we have five international airports. The biggest one is located in Malaga but we have also other uh, international airports in Jerez, Sevilla, uh, Granada, and Almería. Nowadays, there are uh, already some flights uh, from, from the Netherlands to Andalusia. For example, Welling is already flying from Amsterdam to Malaga, KLM also from Amsterdam to Malaga, Transavia is also flying from Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and Eindhoven to Malaga, Sevilla, and Almería. EasyJet is uh, already operating from Amsterdam to Malaga, and Ryanair is flying from Amsterdam and Eindhoven to Malaga and Sevilla. Apart from the flights, we also have the high-speed train, we call it AVE. Uh, is the, this train connects the cities of Sevilla, Córdoba, Malaga, and Granada, and they are also connected to Madrid. So, uh, with this train, you can do like, for example, a nice tour uh, visiting these uh, main cities in, in Andalusia. But uh, talking about nature, uh, as Andalusia is located between two seas, uh, between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, uh, that means that we have ideal climate, uh, very good weather uh, conditions with dry and warm summers and mild winters. Uh, more than 30% of the um, region are protected natural areas. And here you can find 24 natural parks, all of them different, different natural parks. For example, Sierra de Grazalema in the province of Cádiz, or Sierra de las Nieves in the province of Málaga, or uh, Cabo de Gata in the province of Almería near the coast. So all of them, depending on, on the area, are different landscapes and really nice, all of them. Apart from the natural parks, we also have two national parks. Uh, both of them are uh, declared uh, biosphere reserve by UNESCO. They are Doñana in the province of Huelva. It's a very nice area uh, that you can visit with uh, private tours. And in this area, you can find more than 100 different birds. And the other national park is uh, Sierra Nevada, located between the provinces of uh, Granada and Almería. And uh, well, in this uh, national, in this area, you can also practice ski. Is the uh, in the southernmost ski resort in Europe. It's just, the ski resort is just located at uh, 30 kilometers from the city of Granada. 
And uh, you, we can also highlight the natural park of Cazorla, uh, which is the biggest one in Spain. Uh, it's in the province of, of Jaén, and is where the Guadalquivir River rises. And it, this river crosses the whole region of Andalusia. And there, apart from the natural parks and national parks, there are also uh, special places uh, that we can mention, like, for example, Torcal de Antequera is the picture here on the left, uh, where you can do nice tours also in around this area in the province of Malaga. Uh, another special place is the desert of Tabernas in the province of Almeria, where many Westerns have been filmed here. Or, uh, for example, uh, also in Malaga, the Cave of uh, Nerja or the Cave of the Wonders in the province of Huelva, where there are caves inside the earth where, that, where you can go and visit them. They are really nice places also. And I would like also to mention the geoparks. Uh, there are uh, very uh, special places with a uh, very rich heritage with a great diversity of rocks, minerals and special landscapes. At the moment, we have four geoparks in Andalusia uh, located in the Sierra Norte of Sevilla, this picture here, then in Sierra Subbetica in the province of Córdoba, in Cabo de Gata in the province of Almería, where if you go to this place, you can also visit the biggest geode in the world with, that you can go inside. It's the geode of Pulpi, this picture here, and it's been open recently. And then the fourth geopark that has been recognized by UNESCO just one week ago is the Granada Geopark. It's this one, it, this one here, the picture on the right bottom side. And there are uh, private companies that organize different kinds of activities to visit these special places. Uh, like uh, you can do tours by four wheel cars or in a balloon or cycling. So there are different types of activities that you can practice in these areas. Uh, thanks to this variety of landscapes, you can find here a great biodiversity in different areas. For example, you can do bird watching in Doñana National Park, or also in the Natural Park of Cazorla in the province of Jaén, or in Laguna de Fuente Piedra in the province of Málaga, where you can mainly watch flamingos, these birds here. You can also do cetacean watch in the Gibraltar Strait, or look for the Iberian links in Doñana. And there are also private companies in, Andal in Andalusia that organize these uh, kinds of activities to do this uh, bear watching or dolphin um, watching in the Gibraltar Strait. So you can uh, contact all these uh, different companies to do these activities. Andalusia is also first starlight uh, tourist destination thanks to the quality of its night sky. There are few areas where you can enjoy sterile skies at night, for example, in Sierra Morena, or in Sierra Sur in Jaén, or in Los Pedroches in Córdoba. But also you can go to the province of Almería in Sierra Filabres, or in Sierra Nevada in the province of Granada. There are also companies that organize uh, packages, including this uh, activity related to the astronomical tourism. Uh, about regarding to cultural tourism, we can say that throughout its thousands of years of history, Andalusia has accumulated a wide cultural and historic heritage. We have important world heritage sites in the whole region. Uh, just I, I can mention some of them like uh, the most cathedral in Córdoba or Medina Zahara also in Córdoba, the Alhambra in Granada, the Girarda or the Alcázar in Sevilla, the towns of Úbeda and Baeza in the province of Jaén, or the Antequera dolmen sites in the province of Málaga. And because of this uh, rich heritage that we have, we can also uh, do different cultural routes uh, in the whole uh, region 
region, like for example, Betica Romana, where you can visit all the Roman remains uh, between the provinces of uh, Cordoba and Sevilla. You can also do the white village uh, route between the uh, provinces of uh, Malaga and Cádiz, the middle cities in the center of Andalucía, or the route Caminos de Pasión. Uh, about this one, uh, my colleague Encarnación will talk uh, uh, more specifically uh, late after me. It's also uh, in the heart of Andalucía, this route Caminos de Pasión. In Andalusia, we have uh, different types of um, accommodation with very good quality, and they are uh, also located in, located in special places that are part of our landscapes. For example, you can find very special rural hotels. You can also stay in paradors, in farmhouses, in cottages, in old palaces that have been renovated, or also you can find hotels in caves, mainly in the province of uh, Granada, these pictures here. These uh, uh, special um, hotels are in contact with nature, so you can uh, enjoy special areas with no, 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 uh, with no many people and uh, you can relax and stay in contact also uh, always with uh, with nature and the landscape and we will i would like to end uh, talking about uh, our gastronomy which is based on the mediterranean diet uh, where the we we use uh, local products and where the main ingredient is the olive oil you know that we are the well the province of Jaén is the main producer of olive oil uh, all uh, around the world. With uh, we have more than sixty million olive trees just in the province of, of Jaén, and we have uh, well-known wines with uh, the nomination of origin, in uh, like the wines of Jerez, the sherry wine, Montilla Moriles in Cordoba, Montes de Málaga, Condado de Huelva. And we can also uh, do different uh, gastronomic routes, like uh, the olive oil tour in Jaén, or the Iberian ham in the province of Huelva, the rice tour in, in the province of Sevilla, or the tuna route in the province of Cádiz. So this is a general presentation about Andalusia. You have my email address here if you need to get further information. I will pass uh, the floor now to my colleagues, but before that, I would like, uh, regarding the situation we are living now, I would like to say that we have uh, new rules uh, nowadays. Um, well, um, there, uh, our hotels are open, but depending on some provinces, uh, there are, um, there are more hotels or, for example, inland, uh, there are small ho smaller hotels that they, most of them are uh, already open and they are working fine. And the new uh, regulation that we got last week is that we have to uh, wear uh, face masks um, the whole time, uh, even if you are on, on the beach. Uh, no, you don't have to wear them if you are swimming, of course, uh, or if you are sitting in a, a, without moving. But if you walk or um, along the beach or uh, in the streets, or you have to to wear them. So that's the the last uh, regulation that we got that we got from the regional government in Andalusia, just to. Um, keep uh, the security measures. So uh, we, if you have further, uh, if you have more, uh, or if you have questions, we can answer them at the end of the presentation. So now I would like to give my, to give the, the to pass the floor to my colleague, Encarnación Girardez from uh, the Route Caminos de Pasión. Encarnación. Oh, no. Thank you very much, Esther. Um, good morning, everyone. 
thank you very much for inviting us to participate in, in this webinar. Um, I would like to introduce you Caminos de Pasión, uh, that is um, a cultural route located in the heart of Andalusia between the provinces of Seville, Córdoba and Jaén. It is a non-profit organization run by local and regional tourist councils to promote and develop cultural, culture and nature related tourism in the area. The route is well connected by plane with flights to Malaga and Seville and is easily reachable by car uh, via the main regional roads. It goes through the towns of Alcalá la Real in Jaén, Baena, Cabra, Lucena, Priego de Córdoba and Puente Genil in Córdoba province and Carmona, Ecija, Osuna and Utrera in Seville. The Caminos de Pasión route combines the history, artistic heritage, traditions, gastronomy and nature from, uh, the, from 10 landlocked towns. All the Caminos de Pasión towns share one common feature that they all uh, leave for Easter week, during which locals fervently celebrate Easter traditions dated, dating to Baroque era. Um, with regard to heritage, uh, the towns are home to important monuments, museums, interpretation centers, and archaeological sites, exploring different eras um, and some of them are uh, some Roman ruins, like the Torre Paredones archaeological site in Baena, Fuente Alamo Roman Villa in Puente Genil, Plaza de Armas archaeological site in Ecija, or the Necropolis in Osuna and Carmona. Also Andalusi architecture, including the Alcázar de la Puerta de Sevilla in Carmona, uh, or the Barrio de la Villa neighborhood uh, in Priego de Córdoba, and some medieval castles like La Mota Fortress in Alcalá la Real or uh, other fortresses in Lucena, Priego de Córdoba, Cabra and Utrera. Some Jewish heritage, including necropolises in Lucena or the Jewish quarters in Carmona and Utrera. Some important buildings, uh, Renaissance buildings, uh, such as the Colegiata Church in Osuna, uh, but however, the most significant style is Baroque, Baroque, which is predominant in most of the palaces, churches and cloisters on the route, but also lives um, in, the, in the town's Easter week traditions. In addition to the rich uh, cultural heritages, uh, the Caminos de Pasión towns have stunning natural uh, surroundings. Uh, that are also worth visiting, like Sierra Subetica's Natural Park in Córdoba. Each town is set in a remarkable landscape with fantastic hiking trails leading to protected uh, natural spaces. Vias Verdes or Greenways and the Great Trail are perfect for exploring the area by bike, horse or walking. There are also a host of nature-related activities like uh, like kayaking or paragliding or, or host uh, routes. Uh, the route offers exquisite cuisine made up of authentic local produce, extra virgin olive oil, wine, convent produce, traditional confectionery, king's cheese, cured meats, cheeses, Typical dishes, dishes uh, made using popular recipes uh, can be sampled in many, many excellent uh, bars and restaurants that are already open, most of them. Uh, many local companies offer food-related experiences, including olive oil tasting sessions, tours of wineries and vineyards, and different local farms like aloe vera plantations, for example. Easter week is one of the most important cultural, social, artistic, and religious uh, form of, of expression in the area and, in, and also in Spain. All of the Caminos de Pasión towns uh, share one common, common feature and they, they live it all, all, all the year around. Uh, 
they are all the time active and organize many events and festivals. Visitors can visit Brotherhood houses, which are small museums exhibiting the heritage related to Easter week celebrations and rituals. Many churches also display the sculptures uh, that are paraded through the streets during the Easter week processions with informative, pan informative panels. And different festivals take place all year round. The spring is particularly busy uh, with ferias, Cruces de Mayo and other uh, religious festivals. But during the summer times, uh, also the towns make the most of cooler evenings with packed cultural agendas, including concerts, theater performances and or flamenco festivals. There are many festivities in autumn too, uh, most of them related uh, with food. And there is a wide range of accommodations uh, in the area, included, uh, including its historic charming hotels, parlors, and hostels. Um, with regard to capacity, there are some large hotels um, uh, in Carmona, like Parador or Hotel Alcazar de la Reina. Also in Prigo de Córdoba, we have uh, Hotel Huerta de las Palomas and uh, Hotel Fuente de las Piedras in, Car in Cabra. The rest are small hotels with a capacity of 10 to 20 rooms. Uh, furthermore, there is a wide range of rural houses and holiday apartments uh, as alternative options. Uh, to finish, uh, I would like to show you a promotional video about the route. And here you have also my contact details in case you, you need further information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I will now start the, the video. And again, um, after the second part of the presentation, it's possible for you to ask all the questions. Um, so please do send them in the prompt uh, uh, Q&A and we will make sure that we will live them, uh, answer them live. Hace tiempo que decidí vivir con pasión. Pasión por apreciar todo lo que me rodea. Detenerme en los detalles, sorprenderme, dejarme envolver por la belleza, sentir mis raíces, respetar el pasado. Pasión por respirar, caminar y respirar. Respirar y caminar. Hace tiempo que decidí aprender de los de siempre, de las pequeñas cosas. Me apasionan los sabores de siempre. Aunque también me dejo sorprender por los nuevos. Ahora sé cuál es el verdadero significado del descanso. Solo quiero lo que es puro y verdadero. La emoción me invadió. Y vino para quedarse. Hace tiempo que mi vida se llenó de magia. Caminos de pasión. Un viaje apasionante al corazón de Andalucía. Thank you, Encarnación, for your, from, for your presentation. And now I will uh, pass the floor to my colleague. Uh, Ignacio from the province of Cádiz. So Ignacio, you can start when, when you are ready. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Esther. Uh, hello, good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for joining us today. 
let me introduce myself. I'm Ignacio, Ignacio Santiago from the Tourist Promotion Board of Cadiz. So welcome to the province of Cadiz in front of your screen. And it's not easy to present a region in, a, in just a few minutes, but I will try it. Well, well, so what can we tell about the province of Cadiz? Cadiz is located just in the south of Spain, between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean facing the African continent and separated by the Strait of Gibraltar between two provinces, Sevilla and Malaga. Cadiz is the birthplace of flamenco. The weather is always fantastic with 330 sunny days annually, or 330 days of sunshine. Uh, there are six natural parks. Uh, more than one third of the province is protected area together these areas make Cadiz the province with the greatest number of protected land in the whole of Andalusia. There are 260 kilometers of coastline between Mediterranean and Atlantic beaches. And also Cadiz is the oldest destination in Western Europe. Uh, Cadiz has more than 3000 years. So it is also a, a cultural destination. Well, th there is a, a, a wide range of possibilities in Cadiz, but today, um, I'm sorry, just a second. Okay, I'm ready. Um, so there is a wide range of possibilities in Cardiff, uh, but today we are going to talk about the province focused on nature and inland tourism. Uh, Esther? Next, Esther, please. No, bef mm, antes, a las conexiones. Una, ay, perfect. Uh, and before dealing with this matter, with the nature, how to get to the province of Cadiz. It's very easy to get to Cadiz. There are two airports, uh, Cadiz, uh, uh, there are two airports in the province of Cadiz, sorry, Jerez de la Frontera and Gibraltar, particularly for UK people. And there are two airports near the province, Sevilla and Malaga. Sevilla is about one hour away from Jerez, and Malaga is about one hour away from the Mediterranean part of province. Uh, Esther, por favor. Okay, so this map painted in green represents the whole area of the province of Cadiz, and we are going to divide the province into three parts. Within the line also painted in green, there are two natural parks, Sierra de Grazalema, which was designated a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, and Los Alcornocales. In both, you can find the root of the white villages. Uh, Esther, please. Anyone who decides, it's, uh, so anyone who decides uh, to travel along this route will be rewarded with an Andalusia of two colors. Esther? Again, please. Uh, okay, so the whitewashed houses contrast against the green of the impressive natural landscapes that surround the vast majority of these villages. You can visit a lot of fascinating places on your way. Watch blankets being made by hand at the factory in Rafalema, just this, this city or this village, uh, or find out how olive oil is produced at the oil mill of Zara de la Sierra, or dropping on leather craftsmen at work in Ubrique. Uh, it's a small village in these woods. Um, by the way, uh, bags and other leather goods are made here for brands such as Louis Vuitton or Loef. And also there is a wide variety of activities such as, Steph, uh, please. Okay, for example, climbing, hiking, horse riding, organic farm, caving, mill, or mills, oil mills, hang gliding, paragliding, stair please, cheese factory, La Via Verde, or La Via Verde, or the Greenway. Podemos pasar este? Aquí. Dos veces más, two times, please. Okay. So the Greenway. The Greenway follows the route taken by the old railway line for 36 kilometers, passing through 30 tunnels, four viaducts, and five disused stations. This is a beautiful trail, or this is a beautiful trail uh, for walking or cycling with many sites along the way. Esther? 
Okay, so uh, we are now on the coastline of Cadiz. Here there are four natural parks. The Strait of Gibraltar, La Breña, Bahia de Cadiz, the Bay of Cadiz, and Doñana. Step. Well, the Strait of Gibraltar, this is the southernmost part of Europe, an authentic paradise overall for beaches, but also you can practice sport activities. For example, surfing, diving, windsurf, well watching, bed watching. Okay, okay, perfect. Perfect. And regarding this last activity, bed watching, just to say that Cadiz is one of the three most important places in the world for the migration of birds. More than 20 million birds cross the nine miles separating Europe and Africa at the Strait of Gibraltar each year. Step. And it must not be left aside the cultural attractions such as archaeological uh, sites. So, so now this is a Roman ruin in, in Cadiz. Uh, perfect. And this is La Breña, the third natural park. A perfect place for hiking, kayak, canoeing, surfing, cycling, running. Puedes pasar este, por favor. This is the, okay. We have some trail here located in La Breña. Again, please. Well, um, this is the Bay of Cadiz or part of the Bay of Cadiz. Uh, nautical activities predominate in the Bay of Cadiz, such as sailing, but also traditional experiences, as for example, visit a salt mine. Esther, por favor. Okay, this is for sailing and this is the salt mine, perfect. And around the Bay of Cadiz are located the main cities of the province. For example, Jerez de la Frontera. Uh, Jerez is well known for its sherry wine, wine cellars, the Royal Andalusian School of Equestrian Art, and the show How Andalusian Horses Dance. Uh, it, it is a, a unique show in the world, or the Flamenco Festival, or the World Motorbike Championship in Jerez de la Frontera. And other cities around the province of Cadiz, or oh, sorry, are around the Bay of Cadiz. Uh, are, for example, El Puerto de Santa Maria or San Lucas de Barrameda, from where Christopher Columbus left for America. And here, or both, uh, or this area offers a lot of possibilities. For example, golf. There are more than 20 golf courses in the province. One of them, Valderrama, where in 1997 was held the Ryder Cup. I, okay, step. Okay. And exactly here in San Lucas de Barrameda is located the national park of Doñana, the last one. Pass, please. Yes, this is Doñana. Perfect. Uh, one of the most important natural parks in Spain. And also an important point for bird watching and more animals and activities. Pass, please. Okay. Gastronomy. So many visitors who come to the province of Cadiz are attracted by its gastronomy. Recently, Cadiz has been awarded by many national and international. For example, Ángel León and his restaurant a Poniente in El Puerto de Santa Maria, the first Andalusian restaurant with three Michelin stars. Well, in general, uh, seafood plays an important role in the gastronomy of Cadiz and red tuna, the wild tuna. Uh, it must not be left aside the cold meat, which can be found in the town from La Sierra. Next one, please. Uh, okay. And lastly, accommodation. After a busy day, uh, a good dinner, you have to rest in a good accommodation. Uh, the province of Cadiz has a total of more than 44 hotel, hotel beds. Uh, with more than half being in the four and five star categories. Leading Spanish and European hotel chains operate in Cadiz, especially on the coast. And also there are charming hotels such as Castle, Wine Cellar, Convent, Bastion, 
and so on. But in my opinion, uh, the reason why Cardiff coastline is exceptional is not only because we have uh, incredible or unspoiled uh, white beaches. It is because it doesn't have a coastline spoiled by tall hotel and buildings that dominate the natural beauty. So the hotels in Cardiff are not allowed to build higher than three floors. Most of them have three or, le or less floors to preserve the environment. Um, well, my friend, that's, that's all at the moment. Thank you very much for listening. We are at your entire disposal. Um, well, I invite you to discover the region where I'm lucky to live. We wish you all the best and have a nice summer. Uh, okay, thank you, Iñaki, for your nice presentation about the... Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, all right. Uh, sorry. Thank you, Iñaki, for your presentation about the province of Cádiz. And now uh, we, we will continue with the province of Málaga in Costa del Sol. So I will pass the floor now to Matías, Matías Verne. Uh, hello, Matías. So now you can start with your presentation about the province of Málaga. Okay, so thank you very much, Esther. Thank you very much to the España and also for Dennis, for Travel Pro, for being here and for you guys to listen to this because I know it's difficult times, it's hard, we all have loads of work and has everything has changed a little, little bit. So we'll try to make you now like Costa del Sol Malaga and also give you some insider tips and how has changed, um, things changed lately. So first to explain first, why are we called Costa del Sol Malaga? And um, well, we're from the tourist board of the province of Malaga and Costa del Sol is our brand name. It's because it sells better, basically, because everyone knows Costa del Sol and it's famous for many things, but it's not just the coastline. So that's what I will try to explain to you today that the province of Malaga has hinterland, has, has many beautiful things. Um, as I told you, it's not just the coastline. Well, we have 160 kilometers of coastline. So of course you can come because of the great weather. We have over 320 sunny days every year. It's never too hot or too cold. So it's a very mild climate. In winter, we get about 15 degrees, maybe up to 20. And we don't have any snow. In the mountains, we have sometimes a little bit of snow, but I must confess that uh, my kids have never seen the snow until I went to Sierra Nevada with them in Granada. Um, also to let you know that um, the province of Malaga is one of the hilliest region in Spain. We have many, many mountains, but in the last, in the 80s and the 90s, people all, were always on the beach watching the sea, but they never turned around to see the mountains on their back. So that's why we are here as well. So just to let you know, like Esther already mentioned, all, we have many nature, nature reserves, natural parks in also in the province of, of Malaga. As you can see here on the left, this is El Torcal, like Esther mentioned before, where you can do really beautiful routes, you can walk walking. And um, you can even, um, there is an astronomy center on top, so you can also see the different stars at night in summer, which is really, really beautiful. And um, we have different nature reserves as well, such as Fuente de la Piedra in the, in the interior of the province, where you have flamingos, like, like my colleague also mentioned before. So this is something which surprised me because I'm German. I came here to, the, to live here and I was, oh cool, we're on the beach, it's beautiful. But actually then I discovered that there is much more like bird watching. So we have a whole guide on the birds just in the province of Malaga who come here and then they continue sometimes to Cardiff to go to Africa or they stay in Fuente la Piedra and they just stay there for the winter because maybe in Germany it's snowing everywhere and then they're coming down here and here it's 15 to 20 degrees which is nearly their summer so it's very beautiful for these birds. Um, you can find this on the webpage of Birding Malaga 
And just exactly. So on this web page, you have all the information about uh, the birds, where to go, how to see them, regulations, etc. Now, the next one is um, Sierra de las Nieves, which is right now in the process of becoming also a natural reserve. So it's, it's a very special natural park because it's something you wouldn't expect in the south of Europe, in the south of Spain, next to Africa, actually. So as Mester mentioned before, we have the desert in Granada, where I got married, actually, in the caves, as she mentioned. And then we have very close to it in the province of Malaga, Sierra de las Nieves, which is called, well, the snowy mountains, because that's where we have every year some snow and that's we have why we have pine trees, etc. So you can go from there to the sea in about half an hour by car and go hiking and even go to the snow and then be on the beach at the at the same time. Um, as I told you before, El Torcal, it's part of the World Heritage by the UNESCO of Antequera. Antequera is a very special place. It's not very well known among tourists. It's in the center of Andalusia, actually. So it's a very convenient place for those who don't need sun and beach all the time. So you can stay in Antequera and do day trips to Cordoba, to Seville, to Cadiz, to Granada, and to Malaga City on the coast and discover the, the whole area of Andalusia from one hotel and you don't have to change the hotel every two or three days. So in Antequera, we have El Torcal, which is a huge, huge, huge site where you can go hiking for five or six hours and you see nothing else than these um, rock formations. So this is not just one special image, it's all like this. So it's really, really amazing. Um, it was actually, um, it comes from a very long time ago when there was a, a big lake and then the mountains went up and the lake evaporated and that's why I have these special formations. So that's the story behind it. Uh, also in Antequera, we have the dolmen sites, which is uh, also part of this world heritage, which has been declared world heritage a few years ago. So the good thing is you can visit it for free. The dolmens and the Torcal, it's all for free. It's always good to have a guide, you know, you can get lost, but I did it on my own and I didn't get lost. I'm still here, so that's good. And the dolmens are really, really amazing because they show us how people back then already lived here and you can actually touch it, feel it, get into the dolmens and be right there where our ancestors lived every day. So really, really amazing. Um, concerning there on this photo, it's funny because at the at the back you can actually see some of the mountains which are part of this world heritage. So we have from the provincial government of Costa del Sol Malaga, we have uh, besides the birding part, we also have the, a big hiking route. So um, I mean everyone knows Camino de Santiago. We all go to Santiago. So there's one starting in Malaga City as well. So for those who don't want to come down, they can go up through Spain, they can go to Santiago from Malaga, but from the provincial government, we also want to promote small villages, small towns in the hinterland where you get people who don't just want to party and be on the beach. So we de designed a whole trail doing the whole province and then you can uh, go around the province by different stages and actually discover the, the province like this, which is called La Gran Senda de Malaga. So there also you get stamps and then you get something at the end, etc. a bit like the Santiago um, hike, hiking way. Exactly. So that's about hiking in our area. And also um, part of this uh, trail is Senda Litoral, which is the, the pathway on the coast, because as I said, we have 160 kilometers of coastline, which are quite different. So you can find, like here you can see small cliffs, we have bigger cliffs, we have small bays where you can only go by hiking or by canoe, for instance, or paddle surf as well, if you want to. So it's really cozy on the, in the area of Nerja. If you go towards Nerja, you have smaller bays and it's a very different 
to the other side. So if you go towards Torremolinos, Ben Almadena, on the other side of Malaga, you have very vast beaches and they are very wide and very beautiful. And on this um, coastal path, you can actually do these 160 kilometers in a bit more than 40 different stages. Or you can just go from one village to the other without seeing any cars. And this is nice just to combine it and just, well, to do something else than lying on, on the beach, I think. And this is a bit our new crown jewel in Costa del Sol, Malaga, um, the Caminito del Rey, the King's Pathway. It's named the King's Pathway, not because it was made for a king, <laughs> but it was actually built for the, for the workers of a hydroelectric plant to come from the villages to the hydroelectric plant. You can see at the, the, in the middle of the photo that there's a big lake, so that's where they worked and they had to go from the other side to this lake, so they had to walk on this path every day to go to work. So <laughs> now complain about your way to work. So um, this path until five years ago, more or less, was closed because it wasn't maintained. So they, they didn't repair anything and it was actually legal to do it because you could die because there were big holes everywhere and you could stumble and just fall down, which unfortunately happened every year. There were always people running around there and yeah. Well, so what we did is to restore the whole thing. So now it is totally restored. You can't fall down. Well, if you can jump, but you shouldn't, but you still, it's really safe. You can do it with children from 12 years onwards. Okay. Only problem, as you can see on the photo, it's not accessible for wheelchair. So there are stairs, etc. It's not very hard to do. So it's, um, so it's about three or four kilometers to walk around and you have mainly to remember two things, okay? First, in summer, it's get, it gets really hot in the interior of the province and of Andalusia. So if you book it, for example, at two o'clock, you might get really, really hot because the sun is really strong. So try mm, to make your clients come in the morning or in the late afternoon. And secondly, it's very important to book it many months in advance because it's really hard to get the ticket. So it's not like a zoo where you just go there and you buy your ticket at the entrance, but you have to book in advance on the official homepage, Caminito del Rey. And then you can get tickets with a guide, without a guide, etc., in English or in Spanish. And you have to book it in advance a certain hour, etc., so that you can be sure to get um, the access there. Exactly. Um, we also have um, many vias ferratas. Vias ferratas is where you, you're kind of climbing, what you can see on the photo. So you're kind of climbing, but it's already prepared. There are already uh, um, different pieces in the rocks so that you can attach to them. So it's climbing e made easier, but it's still nothing for me because I don't like heights. So really, really cool. But that's again a thing um, that you wouldn't expect here. So you can do also all kinds of things in this province that have to do with active tourism, with mountaining, hiking, climbing like this here. Or also we have these um, paragliding as well. So this I did two weeks ago, it was our wedding anniversary. So that's why I have it in my mind all the time now, this thing. And we went paragliding. So all wearing the mask and then there was the other one wearing masks and we just did paragliding with masks. So went well, we also did diving. You can go diving here, it's great. And we did this two weeks ago, so you can do it. And we are, the things are open and working actually. Um, the caves, like Esther mentioned before, so you have several caves in Andalusia and also in the province of Malaga, we have even a cave guide. So if you're interested, you will just let me know, you will get my email address. And I can send you our ebook on caves in English. So there you have an information on all the caves. So the most famous is La Cueva de Nerja, which is a huge cave, cave where they did concerts until last year, but they don't do any concerts anymore. So 
just to get an idea of the size of the cave. So you can put an orchestra inside and the audience, and it's really, really stunning. Um, but we have several other caves which are in the interior of the province, which are not so touristy. So it's very nice to discover them. And many, as you can see on the photo, have rivers inside where you can go bathing then and swimming. We have a guide also on different rivers and lakes of the province where you can actually go swimming. So this is all something that we try to make people understand that there's much more to it than just sun and beach. Exactly, like I told you, many more activities. So you can do, like I always tell people, I mean, in Malaga, Costa del Sol, you can do everything but skiing. But then you go to Sierra Nevada, which is one hour and a half away from Malaga. So, and there you can go skiing, but really you can go in the mountains, you can go diving, you can go on the beach, you can go hiking, you have many, many animals. For example, we have a goat that only exists in Malaga province, the Malaga goat. So there are many dishes also in the gastronomy around this goat. And like Esther mentioned already, wines, great gastronomy. We have many gastronomic festivals. Every, nearly every village in Malaga province has their own dish and their own festivity around this dish. So you can actually travel from one festivity to the other <laughs> in the year. And we, they, there are also many companies organizing um, visits to markets and food visits uh, where you can buy your food and then there's a chef with you and you're cooking paella or gazpacho or something like this. So um, this photo, well, no, this is a real photo. That's a nice thing about it. So just to let you know, the bridge you can see there is about a hundred meter high, which is as high as the Caminito del Rey I showed you before. So that's always the two measures <laughs> I tell people. And um, this is Ronda, okay, funny story, we have in the province 103 villages. Four years ago, we only had 101 villages, but then there were elections and two villages split up. So now we have 103 and we had to change all the papers and all the presentations to 103. But just to let you know that all these villages are really, really typical because people, many very often ask me, which is a, where is a white village there? And I say, well, they're all white. <laughs> they're all white. Well, there's one that is blue because they painted everything blue. And the other, true story, I can tell you later if you want, just ask me. <laughs> and the other villages are all white because of course the heat and because of the history and now they paint them white because it's just really, really stunning. And there are famous villages such as Mijas or Frigiliana next to Nerja, which are typical white villages, but all the other are still as typical. They are white, people just speak Spanish. You hardly get a car park there because they're just so small. So it's really, really special. And Ronda again is a very typical example for this. Very old village, the origin of bullfighting as well. Okay, bullfighting is really bad because I, I've seen one just to do it and I don't like it so much. But okay, still, it's, it's part of the culture and you can actually visit where breeding farms, where they breed bulls and you can see how well they live. So it's a really, really authentic experience as well. And you can use the bullfighting rings everywhere in Spain for other things, car presentations the final dinner you have a great acoustic for example in the one in ronda if you clap your hands in the center of the bullfighting ring you hear it in the whole bullfighting ring so you can organize a concert there which is really really a great venue so i'd rather see these bullfighting rings as venues than as something else exactly Okay, so as I told you before, we talked about Antequera. So we talked first about the dolmen sites and the and the Tocal, which is um, cultural heritage. But we also have Antequera, which, as you can see, is a beautiful white village, and you have a, a castle on top from which you have great views as well. 
and Mijas, the white, a typical white village, like I told you. So you can visit Mijas in Tuk Tuk, even on donkeys. You can visit, do a donkey tour in Mijas. So very nice place and very authentic place, as you can see on the photo. Torox is also some a, a white village again, but it's funny because in here in Malaga we all we often have Mijas and Mijas Costa. Torox is the same, a white village on top, and then you have Torox Costa, the coast, which is the part on the on the coast. Again, very beautiful white village on the other side towards Nerja. Um, this one I talked to you before um, concerning Ronda. This is a really beautiful bull breeding farm where you can have wild bulls and you can do um, incentives, just a visit, a typical lunch there as well. And you can see how they breed the bulls and they explain the whole story to you. Um, wineries as well. Okay, we like wine, as, as they told you before as well, and we make great wine. So we have two places mainly in Malaga City, in the mountains of Malaga, you have very nice wines. And also in the Axarquia, you have these sweet wines. So we have natural sweet wines because we make them out of the raisins. We don't make it with the grapes, but with the raisins, so it gets much sweeter. And here the photo is from Ronda, where we have 18 vineries and vineyards around the, the village of Ronda, where you can taste great, great red wines, which are not as expensive as French wines. <laughs> and also there in Ronda, we have La Almazada, um, which is an olive oil farm. So there you can visit um, these, this area, which is also an artistic area because they have some artworks on the walk. So you can actually get you the olives, see how they make them, do olive oil tastings, etc. And as I told you before, the gastronomic tours are really stunning here. So you can, yes, like I told you, there are companies organizing tapas tours, companies organizing wine tours, and also market tours, which is really, really nice, where you can get your clients on the market. They buy, they don't get real money, but they go to the different stands, they get the food, they have to go to a, to a typical farmhouse, and then they cook it there. So this is just the best experience ever. And well, that's more or less all from me. Now there will be a short video to just to get you a bit, little bit more amazed than you are already. And I hope you liked it. Any questions, you can send us emails in the chat, wherever. Thank you guys. Thank you very much, Matthias, for your presentation. Uh, I will now start the correct video for your region. So, um, yeah, I would like to, um, to uh, take care of the questions right now. 
I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment so uh, everyone is able to answer questions. Um, so I'm going to ask um, the uh, attendees who are still uh, attending right now to, if you have any questions, please do share them with us. Um, uh, let me see. The first question that we had was from Petra van Veen. Uh, she asked it in the beginning. Um, she heard that uh, it's required to wear mount caps everywhere now. Um, and um, she thinks it would be like hard to sell to their customers. But can you please uh, enlighten us about uh, how your experience is with um, the, the regulations right now in the region? Uh, Esther, maybe you can tell us some more about the regulations at the moment. Yes. Well, yes, it's what what I said. Uh, everything is open now. Uh, I mean, restaurants, uh, uh, bars, uh, hotels. Most of them are, are open, uh, either inland or uh, along the coast. And well, shops are also open. The only thing is that we have to uh, to wear masks, face masks. Uh, all the time, uh, either in the street or if you go in a public transport or you don't have to wear them, for example, if you practice some sports, uh, open air, you don't, it's not necessary. Or if you are on the beach uh, seated or uh, swimming, of course, you don't need it also. But if you walk along the beach or in a, if you walk along a swimming pool, then you have to wear them. That's new from this from the beginning of this week. Uh, it's a new regulation from the regional government of Andalusia. Okay. And but for example, if you go to a bar uh, inside, you, the 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 um, well is um, you you don't you don't have to well the bar has um, has an, has to be completed with the uh, plenty of people. So they, they have to be open for a 75% of occupation or inside the bar. But outside, for example, in a terrace, uh, all the tables can be used. Uh, you, I mean, uh, they can uh, use the, the whole terrace for for customers. So, uh, so, because you are in, uh, in the open air, so it's no, it's no problem for, for that. And when you are seated in a specific place, you don't have to wear mask or uh, either, okay. uh, because uh, if you are eating or drinking, of course, it's not necessary to, to wear it. And and for hotels, uh, as I as I said, uh, most of them are open, uh, but they also uh, have. Uh, security measures like they have to keep distances between customers and also uh, between tables in common uh, places inside the, the hotel. Okay, and do the regulations? Uh, for example, swimming pools are also open, but not uh, they don't use the the I mean uh, not for as one hundred percent of occupation like they use it for a fifth. Uh, 50% of the total occupation. So just to, to, to maintain the, the, the distances between yeah. the customers. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, and do the regulations also apply to children, the mount caps? Uh, the masks uh, are not compulsory for children under six. Under six, okay. Yes, for uh, children uh, over six, they, they have to wear them also. All right. Um, so I just got one more question from, um, I think it's uh, either Jose or Jose, I'm not sure because now <laughs> the, the, the Spanish language, but um, I have a group of 30 people and I read that only 20 people are allowed to gather around the beaches, etc. What do you advise? You have a group of? Uh, 30, 30 people. Yeah, well, for but you say for um, a guided tour, you mean or? Yes, I think they mean the uh, group of thirty people that want to travel to the region. Yeah, so well, for guided tours, the the the, the groups are uh, are allowed for up to just to thirty people maximum. 
for okay. visiting play, different places. So no more than 30 people. Um, so 50 people can? Can do it, yes. Right. Yeah, but right. no more of, of that. Perfect. Um, let me see. Um, just two more questions. Um, I think that applies to, to all people that uh, are uh, selling Spain to their, their customers. Um, how do you, uh, and this is to all of you, uh, how do you experience the, the new rules? Are the, the restrictions like um, uh, hard to, uh, to comply by or is it just regular with a mouth cap? Is it, there's nothing much difference about the normal situation or compared to a normal situation? Well, the only special thing is that you have to wear the mask Yeah, and maybe it's not very comfortable now with the heat, uh, because it's quite hot at the moment. But at the end, you have to get used to that because it's the only way that to keep safe and and to look for the rest of the people, just to and also try to maintain the distances and not to kiss. Uh, that that's also difficult for us because we like to hug and kiss everyone. Yeah, so right. we have to change our uh, way of life in that, uh, looking um, uh, regarding that. So for, but for the rest, well, I've been in, for example, now in, a, in the province of Huelva in different hotels in, along the coast inland and people act normally. And just uh, if you are in a hotel, just you have to, to look for the regulations and but not, it's not difficult i mean it's uh, just new new rules that you have to 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 have like a new part of your life like uh, well i've seen a lot of uh, people already going on holiday right now and um of course the restrictions they're needed um but they don't experience a lot of um, trouble um, doing it. So uh, it's again, it is it is something that we have to do right now to keep safe. Um, but I think we just have to all go to Andalusia and see it for ourselves. Um, just uh, the last question: um, the the hot spots like Alhambra uh, in Granada or Cam, uh, Cam, uh, Caminito de del Rey that uh, Matias told us about. Are there any other restrictions besides the mouth caps? In the Alhambra, no. There are no other restrictions. Just uh, uh, beside the, the face masks, no. It's open already. You can buy the tickets on, on the internet. And they just, uh, you have to also to keep the distance, but there are no other um, regulations beside the face masks. So. That's no problem. I've been to recently, last week I was in the Granada Festival. There is a festival of music and dance in the in the Alhambra. Mm -hmm. These days, every summer, there is a festival of music and dance and they have reduced the, um, um, the participants that can attend the, the concert or the, uh, yes, uh, or the show but uh, they are still uh, doing the performances, the concerts, and, and it's really nice to, to attend them. And that's the only thing that you have to wear the face mask during the whole concert. But beside that, uh, it's uh, like every year, it's a normal um, thing. I don't know, if, well, Ma Matias maybe wants to also to say something about the Caminito. Yeah, thank you. Yes, well, the Caminito re also recently opened, I think, about two weeks ago, and the Caminito, as it is in a in a world in a world heritage site, anyways, in a protected na natural area, and because of the weight on the Caminito, you can't admit many people. So there are not groups of fifty people entering it, but every hour there are smaller groups of ten, fifteen getting in. So this helps already. And then you just have to wear face masks, keep the distance and that's all because it's a one way 
um, street. So just walk, you enter on the one on one side and you walk it along and you exit at the other. So you don't cross people at a very narrow point. So you just have to keep your distance, wear the face mask and that's all. Yeah, so you can do it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Matthias, and thank you very much, Esther. Um, well, this wraps up um, the, the questions that we had. Um, okay, and we're getting uh, some more questions in uh, right now. If it's okay with you, we can answer them as well. Two more questions. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, the, the route of the Caminos de Pasión, uh, how many days would it take you to fully uh, um, follow that route? It's up to the to the visitor, Dennis, because um, we have a group. It's a group of ten towns. Uh, uh, the distance between them it's about uh, three hundred kilometers. So it can be made in in one week up ten days depends. But also uh, you can do like um, short breaks to to different maybe to some place or a couple of places it, it's also possible depending on on the route but it's easily reachable to do by by yeah but in, in a week, in a week. Maybe. yes okay. also depends because uh, uh, there are many activities we have some travel ideas in our website um, in case you want to to have a look and have an idea uh, what to do and depends on the activities you you want to to practice um, and to do All right thank you and um, you. the last question is also from uh, petra um is it better now to visit the highlights because it's more quiet i think um so is it is it quieter and more quiet now than it used to be? Uh, yes, now it's quieter. Yes, because the um, you 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 can you you have to think that the flights um, have been uh, um, start have started operating recently, so. We are not getting many people from other countries right now. Uh, at the moment, we have more people from Andalusia, from our region and the rest of Spain, but it's quieter than uh, these previous years. So I think it's a very good opportunity to, to visit these highlights in a <laughs> quiet moment. For example, the Alhambra is really nice to go now because it's not very crowdy uh, or places like uh, Matias said Caminito del Rey or the Alcázar in Sevilla or even the coast, uh, Costa del Sol, Costa de la Luz in Cadiz uh, is or the uh, inland villages like Caminos de Pasión. Uh, Video stopped. But I think um, I think the answer was clear um, because the fact that it is uh, a little bit more quiet now, it is better to visit the, the region uh, so you have more time and yeah. less crowded, uh, yeah. more time to, to actually yeah. enjoy the, the highlights. Um, last question and then. Um, this is the end of the webinar. Uh, the face mask rules, do they only apply in Andalusia or also the rest of Spain? Maybe Rosa can enlighten us about this. Uh, well, it uh, depends on the region. Uh, there are a couple of uh, regions that uh, has introduced uh, this uh, rule already, like uh, Catalonia, Baleares and uh, Andalusia. But uh, perhaps that's, uh, some other uh, regions will follow. Um, so it's, it's good to keep uh, the, the news uh, um, very closely because uh, it, it can change uh, every day. Um, and you must think, uh, like uh, Esther said, uh, it's now uh, 
not so crowd of the, the tourism in, in Spain because it's restarted and, and, and it happens uh, everywhere, of course, in all the countries. Um, perhaps it's now the opportunity to, uh, to visit a, a country and, and a region like Andalusia that it has got so many possibilities, not only uh, sun and beach, but, but also nature and, uh, and very quiet uh, places that uh, uh, you won't think uh, you are even in Spain uh, because they are not so known. So uh, get the opportunity to send your clients now uh, to this uh, uh, region and, uh, and I'm sure they will be uh, delighted. Perfect, thank you so much, Osa. Um, so these were all the questions. Uh, I would like to um, um, thank all the attendees who were with us today and enjoyed the presentations of the regions. Um, I've heard that the videos, they uh, haven't been able to, to play correctly. So we will make sure that the videos will be published uh, either online or in our next uh, digital uh, travel pro because we now have the possibility to do so. Um, so we'll make sure the videos will get broadcasted um, uh, perfectly, um, but later on. Um, we will also be putting the webinar on our social media and on our website. So if you've missed it, please make sure to check it out later. Um, I would like to thank everyone from um, first uh, Rosa, of course, from the Spanish Tourism Board. Uh, thank you very much for, um, for uh, being with us today. Um, again, Esther Romero from Andalusia, uh, Matias Werner from uh, Costa del Sol and Malaga, uh, Ignacio Santiago um, from uh, Cadiz Turismo, and Encarnacion Gerales from uh, Caminos, Caminos de Pasión. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone that was with us today who enjoyed the presentations, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. much. For your Bye. Time. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.